In this MedMastery lesson, let's cover the laboratory tests rheumatologists use to work up a patient with suspected inflammatory joint pain. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein are checked when you suspect any inflammatory or autoimmune condition. However, they are not perfect tests because they could be normal even in a patient with inflammatory arthritis. They are also nonspecific tests, meaning that any kind of inflammatory process can elevate them. Examples are infections like flu, sepsis, colitis, a myocardial infarction, cancer, trauma, or even obesity, renal failure, and pregnancy. ESR also tends to increase with age, and it is higher in females compared with males. So be careful what thresholds you use to determine the normal range. A rule of thumb is that the upper limit of normal ESR for males is their age divided by 2, whereas for females it's their age plus 10 divided by 2. So don't just rely on the laboratory cutoff value. For suspected rheumatoid arthritis, order RF and CCP. There are other biomarkers, but they are not universally available. Sjogren's syndrome is commonly seen together with rheumatoid arthritis. Hence, you can also get an ANA and, additionally, a Sjogren's panel, which includes two antibodies, SSA, also known as anti rho and SSV, also known as anti-LA. If you want to rule out any ANA-related connective tissue disease, Always start by checking an ANA, preferentially by immunofluorescence assay or IFA, because this is the best technique currently available. However, this test still has its limitations because it can be positive even if just transiently in healthy individuals or those with other conditions, such as autoimmune thyroid disease, autoimmune hepatitis, infections, and cancer. Hence, to avoid increasing anxiety and healthcare costs from unnecessary workups, refrain from checking ANA in older individuals with mechanical joint pain and no other sign or symptom suggestive of lupus, scleroderma, myositis, or Sjogren's syndrome. On the other hand, in a young female with unexplained chronic joint pain, even with a vague history, it is reasonable to get an ANA. If the ANA is positive, an ENA or extractable nuclear antigen panel should be ordered next. This panel detects autoantibodies in the blood and includes the following antibodies. Smith, ribonucleoprotein or RMP, double-stranded deoxyribonucleic acid or DSDNA, SSA, SSB, Centromere, and topoisomerase 1, also known as SCL70 antibodies. Smith and DSDNA antibodies are almost 100% specific for lupus, meaning that their positivity should put lupus high in your differential diagnosis. Additional tests you should be checking in lupus include complement levels C3 and C4, a urinalysis, and a random urine protein to creatinine ratio, or UPCR. The reason for the urine studies is because nephritis is the most common organ affected in lupus, and it is a silent disease that should be screened routinely. Be careful not to confuse the abnormalities in the urinalysis, such as hematuria, pyuria, and proteinuria, with a urinary tract infection or UTI. If your patient doesn't have symptoms of a UTI, repeat the test, and if they are still abnormal, send them to a nephrologist or rheumatologist as soon as possible for further evaluation. In Sjogren's syndrome, SSA and SSV antibodies are seen, but if they are negative, this does not rule out the disease a lip biopsy should be pursued next. There are also other Sjogren's antibodies that are not universally available. For scleroderma, aside for the centromere and SCL70 antibodies that are included in the ENA panel, 
there is the RNA polymerase 3 antibody that can help in the diagnosis. For myositis, there is also a myositis panel, which includes several anti-transfer RNA synthetases and other antibodies. For spondyloarthritis, there is only one laboratory test commonly used in clinical practice, the HLA-B27, but it is an imperfect diagnostic tool as discussed previously. For gout, the serum uric acid level is followed over time, and for pseudogout, a panel consisting of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin D, parathyroid hormone or PTH, thyroid hormone or TSH, and ferritin levels is helpful because mineral and hormonal abnormalities can trigger pseudogout. Lastly, for any autoimmune or inflammatory condition, make sure to also check a complete blood cell count or CBC, serum creatinine, a liver panel, and a basic infectious workup, such as a viral hepatitis panel, human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, tuberculosis, and syphilis, not only to screen for any extraarticular manifestation or comorbidity, but also to determine if the patient may have a contraindication to any therapeutic agent you may want to use. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.